It's been a long held belief that cold therapy, such as ice baths, ice packs, and cryotherapy, help with muscle recovery and treating sudden injuries. But what if it wasn't actually helping? What's going on guys? It's Vaughn here from Body Elements. And today, we're gonna go through whether cold therapy is helping us recover or if it's actually killing our gains. So the use of cold therapy actually started around the 1940s where people were using cold therapy to relieve pain and preserve muscle while being amputated. Over the next 40 years, cold therapy come away from amputations and actually come into rehabbing injuries and muscle soreness. It became popular when the term rice was coined by Gabe Merkin. Most of you have probably heard of it and it stands for rest, ice, compression and elevation and it's used to treat injuries. Since then, cold therapy has been used to treat everything from ankle sprains to muscle soreness. The main problem with using cold therapy for treating injuries and muscle soreness was there was actually never any conclusive evidence that said it helped. I believe the reason it was so popular is because short term, it actually alleviates pain from injuries and muscle soreness. Ultimately, new research has come out that says cold therapy does not help with long-term recovery of injuries or muscle soreness. Even Gabe Merkin has come out and said when he coined the term rice, he was wrong. Let's debunk some common myths and explore why cold therapy isn't actually helping you recover. You might have heard people say, put some ice on it, it's gonna reduce inflammation. And that's actually true. The point that's misunderstood is inflammation is actually necessary for the natural healing process. Cold therapy has been shown to disrupt the inflammation process, but as a result, has delayed overall recovery of injured and sore muscles. So the next time you hear someone say, reduce inflammation, just know that inflammation isn't always a bad thing. Another overused term when it comes to cold therapy is that it reduces swelling. Swelling is nothing more than a buildup of fluids at the end of the inflammation process. There are times when buildup of swelling isn't good and this will need to be relieved somehow, but unfortunately, cold therapy is not gonna help you here. The body actually already has a system called the lymphatic system, which gets rid of the waste fluids as the inflammation process progresses. If you are having a repeat buildup of fluids in an injured area, you definitely need to go see a doctor. But research has shown that cold therapy, specifically cryotherapy, does nothing to redistribute the buildup of fluids. The only benefit to using cold therapy on injuries is it reduces pain in the short term. But most people aren't interested in taking a short term pain cut if it's going to prolong your overall recovery of an injured area. Most of you probably already know what I'm gonna say here, but that ice bath is not helping you recover from that hard workout you just did. It's fairly common to see athletes jumping into a bath of ice after competing or having a really intense workout. This is intended to speed up the recovery of the dreaded DOMS or delayed onset muscle soreness. The first thing I thought when I heard this was, I've done ice baths after games of football and after intense workouts and I felt better. But again, we're gonna come back to the pain theory. Just because you're reducing pain in the short term does not mean you're actually recovering better. In terms of recovery from muscle soreness, you're essentially just recovering from a bunch of little micro tears in your muscle. And much like recovering from injury, the inflammation process is going to be necessary here to recover from all those micro tears, repair the muscles and get stronger for your next workout. Cold therapy has been shown to delay recovery from muscle damage. This translates to killing your long-term gains in muscle size and muscle strength. Since icing injuries and cooling muscles isn't helping much, what can we do instead? This may sound a little counterintuitive, but moving the injured area can actually promote the healing process. Now we don't wanna be moving in a range or under a load that's gonna put the injured area in immense pain because we'll be worsening the injury. If we can move in appropriate ranges and under appropriate loads, we can speed up muscle recovery and reduce the amount of scar tissue from injuries. For example, if you can walk around on a sprained ankle without much discomfort, it's gonna be better than it is going to be worse. What we don't wanna be doing is sprinting the day after we've torn a hamstring. Of course, if you've injured yourself, consult a professional, get a proper plan of attack so you can recover from your injury as quickly as possible and return to the sport or activity that you love doing. If you wanna recover from DOMS quicker, much in the same way, some light movement, a light workout is gonna go a long way to helping you recover 
There's also some research that suggests that doing soft tissue work, such as foam rolling, can reduce muscle soreness. Another option for recovery if you've got the cash is using neuromuscular electrical stimulation or NMES. The NMES machines use little electrodes that you put on your muscles that involuntarily contract the muscles of the injured area. This not only reduces swelling, but it also reduces muscle loss in the early stages of injury. These are especially helpful for people post-surgery who can't contract their muscles yet. This video might seem like a little bit of an attack on cold therapy, but that's not what this is. I personally regularly use cold therapy. There are multiple benefits to using cold therapy, but recovery just isn't one of them. In a previous video, I sat in four degrees Celsius water every day for a month, with my longest hold being 30 minutes. The reason I use cold therapy is it can reduce anger, it can reduce stress, it can reduce symptoms of depression, it can improve your fight or flight response, improve your immune system, and don't forget the experience itself is incredible. I also have cold showers every day over hot showers because I find cold showers help with skin health, they help with dandruff, they help with sleep, they can help with waking you up in the morning. They have so many benefits. Unfortunately, recovery is not one of them. There are many more reasons than just recovery to get cold, and for anyone interested, I couldn't encourage it enough. So there you have it. When it comes to recovery from injury and exercise, no ice ice baby. Was that corny? Thanks for watching the video. If you could like and subscribe, that would help heaps. Leave a comment if you have any questions, and I'll catch you guys next time.